Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We are in the uh, IRIE AT Training Center and we're lucky to have with us today Mr. Ellis Ellis from Vision Aid International in the UK and we'll be uh, joining us live from overseas. And there he is right now. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he has to talk to be seen. Hi everyone. <laughs> So uh, Ellis is, is currently experiencing technical difficulties, so he may, may disappear for a couple of minutes, but I'll get rolling here on this. Um, again, I want to welcome you to today's topic, which is new reading machines. This is uh, a couple of devices that we have that provide especially quick and accurate text-to-speech offered by IRIE AT in the United States. And uh, happy to be focusing on some, some cool new devices, actually updates on, um, ex on existing devices. And we're no longer starting soon. We're actually starting, so I'll get rid of that. <laughs> so again, my name is Jeff Gardner. I'm with IRIE AT, and uh, I'll be doing a little bit here and then passing things over to Alice Ellis in the UK. We have a few learning objectives today. So we always have to have learning objectives in case anybody wants any credit for this, and we can help you uh, get uh, the papers filled out that you need for that. Uh, first of all, we're going to learn about some new reading machines. I guess that's why everybody joined us today, find out some new cool things that are out there. And I think we have some pretty, pretty cool ones. One of those is the Read Easy Evolve from Vision Aid International, pretty much the most full featured reading machine that I know of in the market. Um, and then I'll be showing you one called the iReader 2 from Rehan in the Netherlands. And that's a device that's made more to be maybe not as full featured, uh, but more affordable, you know, made on the more affordable level and uh, real simple to use. So I'm gonna just jump right into it and show you the iReader 2. I realized earlier, I actually have a photo there of the iReader 1. Um, the new one looks slightly different, has a black, all black camera arm. Uh, has uh, a little bit nicer, better power button, and just kind of overhauled plastics. It just looks uh, a little bit nicer and smoother. And of course, it has a newer upgraded camera, completely updated software. And I'll be running through that uh, quickly. Like I say, this is the iReader 2, which is many of you know the iReader 1, been pretty popular in certain states. And again, we still have the same simple controls. We have an even more accurate OCR engine now. And uh, like most of the products that we sell, this is a quality product from Europe and doesn't have to be more expensive. It's just better. So let me get over to my other camera here and let's look at this guy. Okay. So let's see if it actually switches over. Okay, it looks like it did. So this is the iReader 2, uh, the white device that you see on the table, if you can see that. And I also have a monitor hooked up, which is an option if you want to have a monitor. Um, you don't need to have a monitor. This device actually has a battery in it, so you don't have to have any cords whatsoever. You take it, uh, let me hold this guy up, comes with a, a nice handy dandy case. You can put that guy in, just opens up. A little awkward trying to do this with one hand. Uh, opens up, puts in there. It's a, a hard case. Be nice. And all you have to do is fold this camera down and uh, off you go. Take it with you. So I already have it set up and I do have it plugged into HDMI into a monitor. Uh, so you can see if you are visual to uh, what it's what it's scanning. But let me just run through the physical features of it a little bit. We do have the camera arm that folds up and then folds down into a nice little guy that's about four and a half pounds, real light and easy to carry around. Um, I like some of these old school controls. It has, um, you know, a standard power button. It's uh, tactile and easy to figure out where that is and brightly lit. It gives you different colors to indicate different things that it's doing, whether it's on battery power, whether it's fully charged, whether it's plugged in. Um, the lights will tell you different things. There's a volume knob, real cool, kind of the old way to do it, but in real precise and easy. Anytime you want to change the volume, it's right there. Just turn this knob. If you want to change the reading speed, there's also a knob right underneath that. I'm starting for the, um, from the left hand of the uh, left hand side of the front panel where we have the power button, 
and then these two knobs right on top of each other, the top one being for, um, for volume, and the bottom one being for reading speed. We have a simple tactile triangle, which is our pause play button, a tactile square, which is our stop and back up menu button. And uh, we already have a Q&A. I'm gonna do a better job when Ellis is going to um, try to answer these. Uh, maybe during my presentation, I, I skip over some of the questions or don't see them, uh, but we'll try to answer all of them live. Um, we did get a question, do we offer trial loans for clients? And yes, we do. Um, so, Again, I'll try to keep up with those questions when they come in. I don't always see them. Um, so as I was saying, we have the tactile square for stop and back up. And then we have um, a series of arrows, tactile arrows that are our directional our navigation keys and, and get us into some other things. It's real easy when you tap the power button. Battery status 100%. It tells you the battery status. Uh, if you wanna know the time, you can press a, whoops, I thought that was the button combination. Scan canceled, please wait. Scan date September 10th, okay. 2020. Sorry, you have to Time press the right, PM. press the right buttons. If you press the play and right arrow button, it gives you the time. Um, and there are some other buttons too, if you want to get into browser. the, the document, document browser. Page two pages. Um, page one selected. You can just press the left and right arrows and there is a USB slot on the side of the device. So you can just slot in a USB stick and load uh, documents or take documents off that way. And then there's also a headphone jack right there. Now there's some USBs on the back as well, but those are for a mouse. If you're using a VGA connection and you wanna change the, the font size and some things. Um, and then you do have a VGA connection to a monitor or an HDMI connection on the back of the device. Um, besides that, it's just pretty simple. Camera is ready. So to scan, all I do is there are some markers on the bed of the device to tell me where to put it. And it's really the flat part of the device. So it's pretty obvious. And it's a little bit of tactile there too to help you uh, place the, the document. You just place it on there, press the play button. It's gonna scan that and start reading it back to me. And since I do have it, start mode, start mode, the mode, the reader to start. and since I do have it plugged into a monitor, it is going to uh, display what it scans up on that monitor. So I can play and pause, pressing the same scan play button that I pressed start before. When you turn the device on, I can move word in for word. This mode with the right or left arrows. In I can move down to different sections or with the um, up and down buttons. And then if I wanna jump to down to the page, I'll just hold down this down button. It goes to the bottom of that page. And then if I wanna go back up, I press the uh, long press the up button and jump to the top. So if you have multiple pages, you can easily jump between them. Um, so then, Let's see, what else did I show you? Okay, so when I'm yeah, reading along, I can change the in volume. Can have the following I can change that Scan reading speed. Let's see, it goes from quite slow to quite fast. And, um, and if I want to um, scan and save, I can press the two buttons together. And then um, the, the left and the, um, and the play button. And then I can append documents. I can make multi-page documents and everything else. And then to retrieve them, I just press these, Camera is ready. Browser. these buttons two, two pages. and go Page to the browser. And press play to open Following it. Controls. Scan documents. I guess I saved the same document that I just scanned, but then to get back out, is press that, and I'm back out into live mode. So this one's real simple and easy to use, and I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because Ellis's machine is not. Um, it, uh, well, sorry, it is simple and easy to use, but it is also super powerful. You can do all kinds of crazy things on it. Um, really, like I said, the most full featured reading machine that I've ever seen. Uh, so, well, let me show you a couple more things on, on this iReader too. 
Um, so if I press, let's see, I'm going to press the play and left button. Should scan that in column mode. And I this isn't showing up on the monitor very well, but this is the this, Incorporated. this is a document where um, maybe I can hold it up to the camera better, where you need to be able to read across um, columns. And so you just press that simple button command and then you can read across columns and get the actual relevant information that you want to get. Put that guy away. Okay, and one question that we often get is what do you do about other languages? Camera is ready. So one thing you can do is if you want to change the system language, you can press the, the stop and up or down buttons. System language English. I guess most often probably uh, Spanish is the one that we'll want, but it does German and Dutch and Portuguese and Russian and all kinds of other languages too. Um, so let's get System language English. back to English. But now I'm on English language, but I have a Spanish document or a document in Spanish. It's that kind of span Spanglish because there's US or US English in it as well. But show you the auto detecting. All I'm going to do is press play and it's going to automatically um, realize that it is Spanish and it is going to. So you may notice it also changed the voice. Um, you can change the voice as you go the same way as uh, I did before the only instead of stop and up and down I'm going to do stop reading voice right and left. Language reading voice Diego, language Spanish. So you can always change that voice, but it automatically switched because it recognized it was a Spanish document, so it switched to the default Spanish voice. So, real handy, easy to use device, uh, comes with the batteries, so you can haul it around with you, very light, and it's one of the more affordable ones on the market. Uh, but being that it's simple and easy to use, there's not that much more to really show you about it. Um, so I'm going to switch back to my presentation. Get that up there. Okay. And um, okay. So next up is the Read Easy Evolve from Vision Aid International. Uh, this is a updated version of the Read Easy Move 2, which many people are familiar with. It also does have simple controls. Um, I'm not sure if those of you can see it. There's a green button on it. Uh, there's really just like four or five buttons on the top of it, help you change the reading speed and voices and um, scan documents. But in its simple form, it's also super easy, super light. Um, does require that it's plugged in, but besides that, it's uh, very portable and can be very simple. But then you can also add on to it with the feature pack and some other things in it uh, and by including a monitor, and you can get all kinds of powerful things out of it. It's one of my favorite ways to read a newspaper, uh, for instance, and it's um, the only scanner that I've seen that will do 11 by 17, or as Ellis will tell you, A3, um, <laughs> to translate that, A4 means letter sized, A3 means tabloid or 11 by 17 for us American people. Um, so, the, and most newspapers now come in 11 by 17 format, so it's very convenient to now just put an entire newspaper page, press play, uh, or press scan, and it's uh, just a couple of seconds and you're gonna get that entire newspaper with incredible accuracy. And then with the use of the touchscreen monitor, that's how I really like to, to read the newspaper. So hopefully Ellis has got that part working. We had a little technical difficulty with that. But uh, with that, I'm gonna turn things over and have Ellis share his screen and show you this uh, Read Easy Evolve from Vision Aid International. Thank you, Jeff. Um, thanks everyone for, for coming along as well and, and listening and, and viewing in. Um, yeah, just very briefly about, about us. Um, Vision Internationals um, started uh, back in 2006, I think now. Um, and I've known Jeff for many years um, before he was with IREAT as well, more years than I care to remember almost. I'm there and I've seen him many times over in the UK at the site village exhibitions that we, that we always do. Um, but yes, yeah, so the Read Easy Evolve 
is now our seventh generation reading machine. So our very first machine was the old sort of traditional flatbed scanner type reading machine, a much larger device with a big footprint that you have to, to load the document into. Um, but now we're obviously the, the newer generation ones are all sort of camera units, which can be much more compact, take up le less desk space and much easier to move around as well. Um, so if I uh, switch my camera on here, I might just be able to share my screen or stop you sharing yours, Jeff, I think if I do that. But I'll just put on my other camera, hopefully. There we are. So I've got the device here. So it weighs about two, um, two kilograms, which is about four and a half pounds or so. Um, it has a carry handle that comes up and you can use the carry handle when it's in the, uh, when the camera's in it as well. Um, and then there are two camera positions on it, but I'll get to that in a minute. So if I just move the camera in a bit closer, Hopefully it'll refocus okay. So again, this is really simple on the controls. They're all nice and tactile. The buttons are colored as well. So on the main unit itself, there are just six buttons. Um, starting from the right, you've got a rectangular green button, which captures. Every time you tap it, it will just capture. If you press and hold it, um, it will force um, capturing in table mode. So it will force it to read across the columns, um, like you saw on the, the iRead 2 um, with, the, with the button combination. So you just press and hold that and it'll force it to go across. Play pause, forwards and backwards a sentence. Um, with the shaped arrows, if you press and hold them, um, they'll do a word at a time and then spell the word as well. And then you've got dedicated buttons for faster and slower, and you push those together and it will change the voice. And then on the side of the unit, we've got a really nice big tactile volume slider to, to finally tune the volume uh, and a headphone jack as well. Uh, every Evolve comes with headphones as well. So if you want to listen privately, you just plug the headphones in and they have an independent volume control on the headphones as well. Um, and the only other bit on this side we've got here is the positioning guide. Um, this you fold out, um, sort of feel it um, on the corner with your the finger on there, and then it folds out to allow you to position an A3 or a uh, 11 by 17 document um, by touch. So obviously this, this product's designed for people with no vision whatsoever, as well as users with low vision when you um, connect it into the screen, if you want that kind of functionality as well. So we'll go through that, but I'll fold it back in for now for the standard letter capture. It also comes with a white positioning mat. Um, so this mat, uh, it's wipeable, waterproof, it's really, it's like tear proof, it's, it's really strong, it doesn't weigh very much, special material, um, and this allows you to um, just slot into the unit, uh, and then it actually gives you a physical area that you can feel um, where the camera will be capturing when you're in the, the letter size mode. Um, the only time you really need that is actually, is actually if you've got a, a desk like the one I've got, which is a wood grain, where units with uh, optical character recognition, the part that reads the text, sometimes they can see characters within the wood grain. So having something like this um, really reduces the chance of that happening and gives you the best possible accuracy on something. Um, so I'm gonna start just by capturing a book. Um, so just pick a page on here, um, place it down. The nice thing with the Evolve camera on it as well, it's got a really big, what's called depth of field. So you can, this is quite a thick book, but you can go kind of twice as thick as this uh, and the page will still be sharp. Uh, and accurate for the for the unit's camera um, so even big boxes and things you can put under there and it'll still be able to uh, sort of read them um, if it's even struggling with something that's really thick you just put the camera into the higher position uh, which i'll do later and then you can capture even thicker objects on it so it's, it's not sort of limited by object thickness for it going out of focus or anything so first difference on the iRead if i press the capture button here on all other reading machines if you press capture you just have a certain amount of time before it will then take the picture and it doesn't matter if you're trying to hold the move the book around or position it, it will take the picture, whatever's happening underneath the camera. With this, if we press capture, capturing. and if I am moving the page around or thinking I need to get it in position, it won't take the picture. It's only when I hold it still for two seconds, will it then automatically take the picture. I'm just gonna turn it up a bit. 192 Kate Morton. The clockmaker as daughter, heels and swept together out through the door and back along the halls to where their carriage was waiting. So it's really fast. And that time to process is done both pages. It straightened each page automatically, um, and then it started reading. So this on some other devices it kind of recognises as it goes, um, but that's the entire processing time on the Evolve. So it's really really quick. Um, you also don't have to worry about the pages being flat either. I'll show that when I've got the screen turned on in terms of how much it can straighten the pages as well. Um, so we've got faster and slower on there as well. So I just show faster 
faster, faster, faster. As you press it, it actually speeds up the menus as well, so you can then hear how fast it's sort of going just from there. I can Waiting. Read. It was Miss Parfield and told slower, slower. Her in the end. Ada had started after her parents, thinking to have a slower, slower. Ask a little more about what it was precisely that they expect. So just pause on there. Um, if I say a bit about the voices as well, um, the Evolve unit has um, quite a wide range of voices. Um, from Ivona, which is uh, one of the, the good manufacturers of voices that was actually bought by Amazon. Um, so we have all of the range of those voices and also the option of the Nuance Vocalizer voices, um, which have many, many different languages on there. Um, by default, the Evolve will support all Western languages included in its price. Um, and it can also support Korean, uh, Chinese, and soon to be Japanese and we hope Arabic as well, but they, those uh, add-ons have a slight additional cost, with some extra recognition parts that need to be provided in, in the unit. Um, well, uh, yeah. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, Larry has raised his hand here. I was going to allow him to, uh, to talk and, and ask yeah. a question here, if you don't mind. No, not at all. No, I've no, known Larry for a long time. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Larry. There. I, did I get it unmuted? Yes. Yep. Hi, Larry. Uh, Ellis, th th this is Larry Lumpkin. I'm delighted to get a chance to speak to you after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. This is not a question that has to do with what you've just talked about, but since I wasn't sure how many were here, I'd get it in. Uh, the question I'm going to ask is, uh, we have the Read Easy Move, and its recognition was phenomenal. The only showstopper for us was is that it didn't produce exportable, it didn't produce RTF in a form that we could put on Bookshare. Uh, yes. And we've been talking about that. Uh, what's the status of that? That's, that's a very important feature for us. Uh, I know, yes. <laughs> I spoke with our engineers earlier on today, actually, about it. Um, and it, unfortunately, the, the version of the software I've got on here is a, a beta version of 6.4. Um, we were going to try and get it into that, but it is quite a lot of work for the features that you've requested in terms of stripping page numbers out, stripping the book title out, sort of all that happening automatically. Um, we have, it still is on our to-do list for version 6.5, um, but unfortunately you're kind of the only person that's requested it in, in all the years we've been doing it. And we do agree it's a, it will be a useful feature. Um, also, even when, just when you're reading a book, um, I think for, for most users, then that's going to be a really useful feature because it's annoying for it to announce the page number to you and the book um, name on every single page. Um, yeah. So things like that. Yeah. That, the thing that is will coming sooner. Yeah. For the format, we, we would need to have for the the fi the page numbers would would need to appear in the printed file hmm. but you wouldn't want them when it's reading yeah no, that's that's the thing we'll have the option to change the export format versus the what's being read or, uh, by the device as well when it's just reading it naturally so oh, okay we've we've spec'd it all it is on the to-do list but it is currently penciled in for 6.5 um, well our budget isn't ready to do that anyway so it's, <laughs> we'll just wait <laughs> okay, okay and it's well. wonderful to get to get a chance to to hear you in the in the flesh <laughs> <laughs> thank you larry and i'm sorry you haven't got it done yet but yeah yes you can I'm sure you can understand there's lots of features that that people request on there and, and we kind of have to go by um the features that the most number of people are going to benefit from um, to sort of enhance the product experience for them. I, I know it's going to make, it would make a huge difference to you and, and what you do with the books and the fact you share them on, on Bookshare, which is a great service for, for visually impaired people to get access to as well. So we definitely want to do it, but we've got other things like Braille display support and other things that lots of other countries have been asking us for for a long time too, um, which are kind of sort of just edging ahead of, of that feature at the moment. So we'll, we'll do our well, absolute keep, best to get yeah, it Yeah, keep us posted. And if, we, if I can be of any help to you, uh, you know, please ask. Thank you very much. Yeah, we will do. Thank you. Well, and, and Larry, you know, this is a, a device that we can upgrade later. So it's one of those things that as, as Alice is adding new features and things, we can roll those out to you and it's very easy to upgrade this device. So as that feature is available, we'll be able to, to roll it out to you as soon as it's available. You know that we understand and thank you. All right. Thanks, I want to put you back on mute, Larry, and uh, we'll get back. All right. Thanks for your question. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Um, so yeah, for software updates on this, we've never ever charged for an update on any ReadyZ product um, since we started and we don't intend to. It's only if features like additional languages that 
that need additional um, um, optical character recognition or different voices from different companies need to be licensed. That's the only reason there'd be a small additional charge. So you just download the software, pop it on a USB memory stick, put it in the back, it detects the update automatically, and all you do is just push the play pause button and it will go ahead and update itself, give you progress as it does it, and then it restarts itself and, and that's it. You've got the new, the new features and, and the improvements. Um, so I'll jump back to it now. There's, there's not really too much more to show on the, on the basic unit as it is. It's just very, very fast, very accurate. I can obviously do skipping words as well. So if I push, uh, it's, it's very, very responsive. That's the other thing on this. So if you've captured a document and you want to jump down five sentences as quickly as you can press the next sentence button five times, it will be there for you. So, so there's no delay on it on some devices and even on our old, our own devices, the older ones, um, it would sometimes be a little bit slow to catch up, but it's very, very responsive. Um, if we press and hold the button, it will do a word at a time. Panic. And soon. E -N -S -U -E -D, comma. And then when you release that button, it will then spell the word out loud to you. So again, you don't need different button combinations on this. It's just press and hold on that and it will do that. Um, the only button combination we've got on here is play, pause and forwards and backwards, which will then do forwards and backwards a paragraph at a time. For you. So the defaults a sentence and then word at a time with spelling and then if you press and hold the play pause button in the middle with the left and right arrow it just does a paragraph. So really really simple. Um, to change the camera all we do is pull it out and it tells us we've disconnected the camera. If I put it into the other port camera connected for tablet capture. and if you've got the language set to American which it is on here then it will tell you it's tabloid rather than A3 size to try and avoid some confusion on there. Um, so, and then the camera is obviously in here now at a, at a higher point, which means it can now capture more of the, of the document area. Um, and then allow you to read a tabloid size newspaper or, or 11 by 17. Um, but before I do that part, I was just gonna show, so the basic unit, this is, happens to be really popular. If somebody just wants a really simple, quick, easy way to access their post or read pages of books, then the basic unit as it is uh, for, for a severely low, low vision user or, or totally blind user works really, really nicely. If they want to do a few more advanced things with it, like for example, create multiple page documents, then that's why this optional feature pack comes in. Um, this actually stores and magnetizes into the back of the unit. So it just clips in on the back there and we just pull it out. I pressed, I pressed the button when I pulled it out there. Um, so really, really straightforward. And it also has a simplifier on it. So this part actually is at the, a section at the top that magnetizes into place, you pull that off, and then it gives you access to more controls, visual controls, help, and the menu. To start with, I'll just do it with the simplifier on. So you've got an exactly set, the same mapping for play, pause, forwards and backwards a sentence and press and hold for a word and the capture button. But you've now also got an extra set of arrow buttons, which enable you to navigate by paragraph directly. And if we push and hold those, they allow you to navigate page by page as well. So I've only got a one page document at the moment, so that won't be much good. So I'm gonna capture some extra pages. And the way we do that on the Evolve is just to use a, a dedicated append button, it's called, which uh, is hexagonal in shape and is just above the capture button in the bottom right. Um, it's called the append button, which will append another page to the document. So I can just turn the page over, press append, Adding page two. and we get the same motion detection on there. It'll just grab the page. It, it's done it. I've obviously got it on A3 height, but still recognize the page on there. I'll pop it back to A4. Camera connected. Camera connected for letter capture. Um, I wasn't reading with the Evolve, so I've appended the page, but it hasn't automatically started the reading because it I wasn't reading currently on the device. But one of the nice things that the Evolve's got, and I think it's the only reading machine that does this, for power users who want to capture books and store them on the device, um, you can also store documents on the device when you have the feature pack. It stores about 80,000 pages, um, so quite a few books uh, on the device. Um, when you've got the feature pack, um, if you have it reading to you, so I can start it reading with the play pause button there or on here. Point for the manners that I can then, remind... I'll just pause a second. While it's reading, if I press the append button, it will join the next page on in the background. So I can press play and then append. Reminding her to use. She called Miss Thornfield a liar and a baboon. She said that she was a wicked old woman. She might even have shouted at her. Up. I don't know if you heard, instead of it doing the, the big loud camera noise, it just makes some discreet sort of bong noises to let you know that it has actually taken the picture. So you know you can then capture the next page. So while it's doing and capturing the next pages, you can still navigate around the document as if it wasn't capturing. So it, it's really is a power 
sort of user feature. But if you want to capture an entire book like this with hundreds of pages, it's probably going to take you 20, 25 minutes. Once you get used to how to do it, you can start reading the book from the first page that you captured and then just proceed to capture all the rest of the pages whilst you're still enjoying the book. So it's a, it's a nice time saver on there. Um, I'll just show you how quick you can actually capture books on pages on there. If I push and hold the multiple page button on here, it will actually do an automatic multi-capture. Multi-page capture started. Adding page four. It's telling me this is the fourth page. Turn page. So this Adding is without it reading five. in the background. Turn page. Uh, the really nice thing with this again, with the motion detection technology it's got in there, if I sit here and I don't turn the page, it knows that I haven't turned the page, so it's not going to take the picture. It actually waits for me to, to turn the page and see enough movement for me to have turned the page before it starts the uh, automatic capture for the next page. So this really cuts down on sort of false captures when you're, when you're capturing any type of document, because what you don't want to do is get to the entire way through the book and realize three pages from the end that um, you've got a, a bad capture and it's not recognized properly. So it really helps to, to reduce the chance of that happening. So it's still waiting it goes, as soon as it sees enough moving on there. And when you get really sort of skilled with it and know what it's doing, you can actually force it to capture just by pressing the capture button. So if I turn the page, page and I know it's in the place, I can hit the capture button page. and I can Ready just do it myself. So almost as quickly as I can turn the pages and capture them, it's recognizing them in the background and allowing me to carry on capture. To stop, I just push the cancel button in the bottom left. Multi-page capture complete. So I'm not quite sure how many pages I've got on there, but we can have a look in a minute when I connect the screen in on there as well. I'll wait and sort of save that bit uh, until there and I'll describe it as well. Um, so really, really powerful on that. Um, and the other control we've got is a, is a sort of a clicking dial. Um, it rotates around it and clicks. This is a word by word dial. So this is really handy. If you're reading a sentence and you're not sure what a word was, um, you can just use the dial to click back two or three clicks and it will jump back two or three words really, really quickly and then carry on reading from where you were. Other devices, you have to press and hold buttons or you have like multiple combinations or we have to push and hold and wait. Or if you push previous sentence, it goes back to the beginning of the sentence and you've got to listen to it all again. But this will just allow you to very quickly just do a word at a time. So really, really quick and responsive, almost like a fast forward. If I do it quickly, it'll, like on the old cassette players, you can rewind and fast forward as quickly as you rotate the dial. Obviously, you can't hear the, the previous words. You only hear the last word when you get there, but it's a really neat, quick way of, of doing that. If you click the dial down, it will then spell the word out loud that you're currently on as well. Um, so that's nice on there. I'll take this off quickly. Um, we've then got a help button. So I've taken the, the uh, uh, simplifier off and then for, for blind users we've got an extra three buttons that are useful. Um, help button in the top left is a key describer mode so if I push that I can then press any other button on the keypad and it tells me what it does. Help. Press the button to hear its function. Press the play pause button. Press to play or pause the reading of your document. Mm -hmm. Press the previous sentence button. Press to move backwards one sentence. Once you've found the button you want, you just press the same button again, and then it will automatically help e exit the help mode and perform what that button's supposed to do. So it's a really, really easy way of anybody, as long as they know that the triangular help button in the top left, you push that, then you can push any other button on the device, uh, even on the main controls, and it will tell you what those buttons do. Um, so you can basically teach yourself how to use the, how to use the unit. Um, so if I push play pause, um, play pause and if I push it again, press document mode. Tall girl. It's exited the, doc the help mode and then started reading the document to me. Um, then we've got document, the uh, document management button and the menu buttons. If I just click on this one, um, it allows you to save a document. I won't go through and save one now because it's very straightforward, but you've got two ways of saving it. There's a microphone built into the device, so you can actually give the, the document a voice tag, your own voice tag to record it, um, or it will automatically try to detect what it thinks is the heading of the document based on the first page and if there's anything that looks like it might be a heading so something that's bold or in larger text it will pick out automatically as the heading of that page and name it for you with that so you've got the two options there um, for it um, then you can also export documents so the evolve has two usb3 ports on the back of it um, and you can then export documents to all the sort of main different formats so there is rtf um, which we spoke with briefly about uh, with larry um, PDF, 
an sorry, accessible PDF, uh, MP3 file for listening, uh, plain text file, um, the actual Vision Aid format document as well, so that that's coming in 6.4, so you can actually back up documents from the device to a memory stick if you need to, uh, to transfer to a different device. Um, so all the main sort of formats are in there. What's being worked on as well on the, on the, and is on the to-do list is uh, support for EPUB format books uh, and DAISY format for both import and export as well. So we definitely want to be able to get this to, to natively be able to read DAISY format books. It has, that's been on the to-do list for a while, but that's getting more and more uh, higher up the priority list. So that, that shouldn't be too long coming, I hope, on there. Um, but you can import any document as well. So if you've got an inaccessible PDF file, you can load it and import it or a Word document or um, an image file. It, it reads pretty much anything and, um, and will then recognize all the text and, and read it out loud to you. So quite powerful from that, from that perspective. Um, only other function on here we have as well, which is kind of unique to um, the Evolve product is a bookmark function. So if you want, if you're reading a book and you want to bookmark all the chapters, you can just press the bookmark button and it will add a bookmark. Bookmark added. And then if you push and hold the bookmark button, it then goes to the bookmark menu where you can just go up and down through all the bookmarks that you've stored and delete bookmarks that you no longer want. So it's a, becomes a really quick and easy way of being able to refer back to somewhere um, on a document. Um, also, if you're using it for study purposes or anything like that, and you need to go back to a certain point for revising, um, it's mainly that or, or chapter headings of a book. If you want to jump back to, to sections on there, it can be really handy. Um, so that's the, the features uh, as they are on, on there without a screen connected. And then if I plug in the screen that I've got back here, um, this is on a monitor arm just because it's on my desk, but this, um, the screen that we, we tend to suggest is a touchscreen monitor. And I'm really sorry, Jeff, <laughs> to everyone, the touchscreen functionality on this beta version of the software has not been fixable. Um, so I did, we didn't realize it wasn't working because this is only an internal testing version of the software that I have. Um, it's my fault completely for not testing it properly last night. So apologies for that. I should just be able to now press on the screen. And, and it moves perfectly smoothly with uh, with a touch screen on there, but it, it won't do that. But I'll just show you the, the visualization modes, which are really, really advanced on it anyway. And we can do exactly the same thing with the joystick. So one of the controls on the keypad in the top right is like an Xbox or a PlayStation joystick, but really simple to use, quite grippy as well. And you get a large cursor on the screen. We can adjust the size and the colors of the cursor. Um, and then you can just click on a word and it will start reading to you from that particular point. So I can come down anywhere you want to. Click. And then I can click it again to stop it. So for users with some usable vision, it means you can actually choose exactly where you want to read, like you could with a video magnifier, but then just click on the word and it'll read to you from that point. Um, so if I just go through the different views, because on the Evolve, there are six different ways of seeing a document that you've captured, and we access those using the, the visualization button or the views button, um, a round circular button, um, just next to the help button near the top left. So I push that on here. I'm going to go back to image view. So I can zoom right out. The Evolve has a really high resolution 12 megapixel camera. So for capturing A4 or A3 documents, it gives you a really sharp e image, even when we zoom right in. I'm not sure if I move the camera a bit closer to the screen on here, as close as I can sort of get it and then move the screen towards you. It stays clear even getting to one word on the screen, or it does just start to sort of pixelate. But what we can do on here, if you're just reading a document with text, we go to the next visualization mode by pressing the view button, and it goes into overlay view. So this is now perfectly clear whatever size we go to because it's a font, and it redraws it instantly at any magnification at 60 frames a second. So it's really nice and smooth um, as you adjust it. And then it allows you to pan around. And if I wanted to jump to the right-hand page on here, which I'm just scrolling over to the right, I can just click on here, uh, click on a word and it will pick the nearest word to where the cursor Able is. To see the carriage as soon as it turned towards Birchwood Manor. She watched the left. And we can have it read from there. So it's a really powerful feature for some users with, with usable vision. It's a great way of seeing tabular information as well, where tables are obviously visual, visually laid out, and that's an important part of it. So you can see the, the columns in this mode as well. A lot of the other units just have what's called a, a column reformatted view, which is the next view on this. If I push this on here, it word wraps, which is great for looking at text, but it's just text in a book, but it's not great for looking at tab tabular information because you lose all the information of the columns. So the overlay view is really powerful for that. And on, on these modes, you've then got smooth scrolling. So I can, if you don't want it being read to you and you've got some usable vision, you can just zoom to the level you want, push the down, the joystick downwards, and the more you push it down, the faster it scrolls. 
and it just continually smooth scrolls to you. And if anybody remembers the old my reader from Humanware years and years ago, or, or Pulse Data International as it would have been, um, they had that sort of scrolling feature without the text. Um, but it's a really nice way for users, low vision users who use a video magnifier to read comfortably themselves without having to rely on the speech, much more so than, than sliding a page around under the camera, um, like you do on a traditional video magnifier. So there's, there's this mode on here, there's the horizontal view as well. So like ticker tape and you can scroll smoothly across on these. Um, on any of these modes, if you wanted to start reading, you just press play and it will start reading from the first full word that's on the, the screen. On a lot of systems, when you scroll and then start reading, it jumps back to where you were, but this one's intelligent enough to actually see where you are as you're scrolling and then remember to where, you, where you are when you want to restart it and actually have the speech if your eyes get tired. Um, then we have another mode, final one, if I click on here, column view. This, so for some users with uh, retinitis pigmentosa, tunnel vision, this can be really, really useful. Um, so they actually prefer the text being centered on the middle of the screen and moving their eyes vertically. It can actually be easier for them to read than having to move their eyes left and right a lot on there. That's feedback we had from, from tunnel vision users. Uh, and then the final mode is one word at a time. So that, that's the six modes we've gone all the way through. This is obviously for users needing wanting very big magnification or maybe long, younger users learning to spell words uh, on the screen as well. Um, the nice thing with this is if you've got modes that you know you'll never use, like a lot of users won't use the vertical mode or the word view, you can go into settings and just turn those modes off. So you don't ever, it won't scroll through them. You can turn them back on if you ever need them. Um, but it's just a quicker way around of getting through them. Um, so I'll go back to image mode. There's the document on there. Um, if I come up to the top, users that um, so have some sort of usable vision, I'm not sure how well it'll come out on here, but it's got a, it sort of shows you how much it straightens the page. Um, the Evolve can actually have a fair, fair go at capturing round sort of objects like tins of food, even providing obviously the text is actually facing up to the device. Um, the straightening's that powerful on it. It obviously is dependent on the light and the font that's on the on the can of food and things like that as well. But it is uh, it's one of the only units that can have a proper go at that, um, which can be quite useful trying to determine if it's a tin of soup or a, a tin of beans, for example, <laughs> if you're doing it for your lunch. Um, so yeah, that's that's quite a good feature. Um, and what I'm also going to show on here as well that so that that's all the different visualizations for low vision users um, on a captured document. If I go back into live mode, so this has a sort of a basic live, live mode. mode. Take a second for the camera to wake up on here. So this is real time live view on it, where you can position your hand to do some basic writing underneath it. You can zoom in on that; it'll stay sharp but the frame rate isn't very high. So you can sort of use it for doing cross basic crosswords, but we wouldn't advertise it for doing, so sitting down and writing letters to your, to your friends because the frame rate's not high enough on there. There is a reading mode though, so if we can push and hold the button on here. Writing mode. It then goes to a much higher frame rate, but it depends on your magnification. The level I'm at now is kind of the maximum you can get to from it but it's now much more responsive as I write on there. So you can use it for basic writing on there, but it's limited in terms of the magnification that you get from it. But we can enhance the color like combinations. So it has all the standard color combinations that all the video magnifiers have. Um, and we can just change the yeah, colors to anything we want. Yellow, yellow all the popular combinations are in there and you can go in and set your own custom one um, for the, the few users that really benefit from that. You can pick from a palette of, of sort of hundreds of, of different ones if you need to on there. Um, so I'll pop it back to color. So that's just with the center button on here. Just change cycles through the colors, uh, different color modes on there. Um, if I put, back, put it back to the capture mode though. Document mode. Um, mode. Put it back to mode. Just take a second on that. So the other nice thing you can do with this um, is if I had got a page and I was just reading it with my eyes and I thought, oh, this bit looks, this is the live view here. This bit looks interesting. I'd like to read from this point here. I can just tap on the touch screen if I had one that, that worked with the right software version or click on the joystick. And that tells the unit to take a picture and start reading from where the, the cursor is. I'm going to do that now, but it's going to ask me if I want to save the multiple page document I've just done. So what I might do first, actually, before I do that is just go through and show you how you quickly and easy it is to navigate through different pages. So if I push and hold the next paragraph button, page two, if I keep page it held three, down, four, it speeds up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up ten, 
and then when you release it, it's now jumped to that page. If I go back to my document mode on here, document mode. this has now jumped to the 10th page that I was looking at on here at the beginning of the page with the page number up there for them, then me to start reading. So it's really nice. It gives you lots of nice feedback on, on the pages you're doing. You can also navigate pages even faster by pressing and holding the buttons uh, and tapping it, sorry. So again, as quickly as you tap the button, it will jump. But the other nice thing is when you've got a multiple page document, Bookmark added. Oh, sorry. I meant to press bookmarks. and holding the bookmark. There are four bookmarks in this document. First page. The nice thing we've added on here as well is that in the bookmark mode, when you create a multiple page document, it automatically makes you a first and a last page bookmark. So if you've captured a 400 page book and you want to go back to the beginning, you don't have to click and press or hold for um, sort of a couple minutes to do that. You can just jump back to the first page or last jump page. to the last page. So it's just some nice usability features in the in the software. It's got a lot more advanced features as well on there, which I'm not going to show you, but it's, it's the only reading machine, for example, that tells you what the orientation of the page was when you captured it. So for blind users who may want to file something away in a filing cabinet and make sure it's the right way round, you'll know whether you positioned it um, sort of in portrait or landscape and, and how many degrees rotation it was when you in 90 degree increments. So it's just little things like that, the feedback we've had from end users over the years that have all gone into the software just to make it as, as usable and, and useful for them as possible. Um, those options are all hidden away though, um, just in a, just accessible for, on a single menu, um, but they're in there and we don't normally show them, but it's just nice to know that it's got that kind of functionality in there for people that, that might benefit from it. Um, so I'll come out of that. Um, and then I was just gonna go back. So I'm gonna capture, I'll go back to the live mode. And then I'll use the cursor and say, well, I want to start from the word on here. And it's not always absolutely 100% accurate, but it gets it pretty close. So I'm going to start on this word here, and it's going to ask me if I want to save this document. Save changes. Would you I'm going to say I don't want to save it because it, what I've done there is capture a new document. And if you've captured a long document and you've not saved it, you don't want to lose all the pages of that document. So it warns you, like if, you, if you're used to using Microsoft Word, if you spent hours typing something in there and you click close and you forgot to save it, it's doing exactly the same thing here. So I'll just choose discard it can't turn. and then it will capture from there and hopefully start reading from that point on there. It'll straighten the page out. I haven't held it particularly flat under here. Recognizing. Bill's promise. On one occasion. Let me just try that here because it was a multiple page document on there, I think. So try it quickly on there. If I come back, I'll zoom out a bit on there. I've got the page on here. I'll try it over on here. Capturing. Recognizing. It's very, very fast, the recognition. Of it. There we go. To, in his own way. So it started from the word my, which I clicked on up there. So that's, that's very nicely. That's really useful on newspaper pages, um, which I'm going to go into in a, in a second, um, because you might be skim reading through an article uh, a low vision user maybe, and then think, well, I don't want to read that bit, but I just want to start reading from the particular article on here. I can click it and then it'll go from there. Um, so it's quite quite useful. Uh, and again, it's a unique feature that, that isn't available on any other device at all, I don't think. Um, so I've got a big newspaper page here. Um, I was trying to find some good news in a, in a newspaper uh, in the UK. There hasn't been much, and I think the same obviously in America with lots of everything that's going on with the pandemic. Um, so this is kind of the best news story I could find because I didn't want to pick it, something about coronavirus because everybody's probably sick to the back teeth of hearing about it at the, at the moment. Um, so I put the camera into the tabloid position. It's told me that when I plugged it in. I then just fold the positioning guide out and then I can align the page by touch. And then all I can do is press the capture button on here or on the capture button on here, and it will capture the entire area of this page. If I do that, capture, capture it's actually a bigger area than that. Um, you can sort of see on the page. It'll take a little bit longer to process the page because it's recognizing all the newspaper print, but it's not long. Recognizing 97%. Daily. Okay, so it's recognized it all. Oh, I'll just pause it for a second. So the speed of this device, even on an A3 site, or sorry, on a tabloid or 11 by 17, is normally quicker than other, any other devices just capturing a normal page document. So it's really fast and responsive. You've got the view that you can look at and zoom around if, you, if you're a low vision user, or you can just let it start reading. Mall, Thursday, September 10th, 2020, J at one, ASAUY backslash, R up. Now, the, the caveat with newspapers, which we always tell people, and it, it is very accurate, but it cannot get all of the text on, on there. I guess users that have, have used OCR systems 
and um, we'll know that unfortunately nothing is 100 percent accurate we never pretend that to people that it is um, so that here we've got uh, white text where the text letters are all in capitals and they're running into each other with no sort of white space between the characters on a red background and it's struggled to recognize it correctly on there um, unfortunately any ocr system would struggle with that part um, the main text on the, the newspaper it'll do much better with but what we can do on here for low vision users if we put it into overlay view so if i just tap the button on here we can see how it's tried to recognize that part and it's obviously not got it we've got a really useful kind of what's called peak feature so if i push and hold the visualization button it will show me the original image behind it and then when i release it it jumps back to the overlay view so for users that have some usable vision you can magnify it up and try and see what the word was that it that may have got wrong before you jump back to the, the normal view to then pan around to try and find some text on there it's done a really good job on the, the big um extra large uh, headline text and it doesn't normally do a good job on that and gets headline text pretty accurately um, and then we can come down and click on a main part of the, the text to start reading classes to get to fit and help tackle the plastic menace by helena kelly they are in two activities that... so it's just reading in there and obviously the overlay view is nice because pictures and photographs stay as photographs because it knows it only replaces the text so you can still see people's uh, faces and, and photographs and diagrams and things but the text is then all enhanced in your chosen color combination on there so it's it's really powerful for that and, and it's the only system in the world again that has that feature and the power to be able to capture a full uh, 11 by 17 page uh, on there which for users that don't get access to, to newspapers in in a more modern sort of way uh, and like the physical paper it's a really nice feature for it um just gonna have a sip of water on there for a sec don't mind hold on um i'm trying to think if there's too much more to go into Is that your beard by the water <laughs> i wish it was yeah no just squashed you <laughs> it's evening in the uk you're all right it is yeah i could should have had a glass of wine ready that would have been nice <laughs> well if i can just jump in quickly um yeah. You know, that is the newspaper feature thing for me, especially with the touch screen. It's a shame that we, we can't show that because I'm really sorry about that. Able yeah. to leaf around the newspaper and and having that it's overlay touching. format, you know, we can still read everything perfectly clearly. Um, but you can tell what's a photo caption and, you know, if there's an advertisement or something, you just ignore that stuff because it's really obvious keeping that same format of, of the original document. Yeah. And then you know, with the touch screen, it's really like a, a hands on experience where you're like leafing through your reading, you put, you know, put your finger where you want to read and it starts reading aloud to you. Um, it's such a such a natural and easy experience. And while it's a, you know, an advanced feature, we've found actually have a number of users recently that are not necessarily high functioning users, but find actually with the touch screen, it's easier for them to use. Uh, so I just it's it's a shame we couldn't show the touchscreen feature and we'll be doing some videos and things with it um, so we'll show that and I believe we actually have one posted already on our website that does show the touchscreen so sorry to jump in but I just I love that feature it's just I'm me. really sorry we haven't got it it's, it's completely my fault for not testing I should have it's it's my fault for using a newer version but that's it does bring me to one more bit that I wanted to show which is a brand new feature that's coming which is why the touchscreen isn't working on this because it's for this part here where it, um, I don't know if uh, many users uh, using reading machines, uh, it can be difficult when you're trying to read a table um, because you have to try and remember the column heading for the row that, for the column that you're, you're in and the device doesn't tell you which column you've gone into. So normally you put them into single column mode where it forces it to read across a column of text, but then you have to remember those column headings and also try and guess which one it is. The problem you've got with bank statements is, um, I've got one here, um, that not every column has information in it. So you'll have like a, a date, a description, a money in and a money out column, but you don't know if it's money in or money out um, because it doesn't tell you that. You can only work that out by the balance at the end. Um, so what we've done and is create something that will detect tables automatically if they're in a, a fairly sort of standard layout, um, and then it will automatically read the column headings out to you um, as it as you allows you to navigate through the cells of the table so it's more intelligent in terms of determining where the cells are as well so i'm just going to try that now because this is something we're quite excited about and this has been a feature we've been working on for a while 
that lots of users have requested because tables for, for blind users, have, they've been a, a real sort of bugbear and difficult thing for them to try and access. So hopefully this will help in, at least in some situations for them. So I've got an example bank statement on here. So I'm just going to photograph this without having to put it into any special mode. I'll just hit capture. I hope this works on the, the demo. <laughs> I'll be really annoyed if it doesn't. So if I zoom out a bit, so it's recognized this is a Barclays bank statement thing. It's got all the standard information like who it is. Um, so I can navigate, I'll let it read through into it and then it should tell us when it gets into the table, it will tell us that it's going into the table automatically. So if I'll read through the address, I'll skip forward a bit on here. There we are, entering table, header row. So it's told us column one of five. So we know there's five columns it's going to read through and then it will go through. And if I, I've just paused it there, so I'm just going to resume it. Column two of five, description. Column three of five, money out. Column four of five, money in. Column five of five, balance. Row two of 12, date. So I'll just pause it. It's gone on to row two of 12. So it's told us there's 12 rows in the table. And it's then just said date which isn't in this cell, but it's detected that as a heading because it's bold and it's uh, a larger font or, or it's bold. So we've got different things that try and pull out headings. There's different color backgrounds and things that will automatically try and see um, if there's something that it thinks is a heading. So now if we let it read across, it won't just read the text that's in the cells, it will read the column heading before it reads the information. So you know which column you're in and which one it refers to. So I'll just resume it. November 10th, description, starting balance, balance. 370 pounds and 20 pennies, row 3 of 12, Penny date, done. November 13th, description, bill payment to MBN ARAP, 377,104, money out, 50 pounds, balance, 320 pounds and 20 pennies. <laughs> I love the way she says pennies on there instead of pence, that's great. Um, so yeah, it's working as we'd expect on there, so it's, it, describing the title to you and then reading the, um, the number out. And it, obviously if you've got a column with nothing in, it doesn't matter because it's on this one, it was money out. Um, it just, obviously it subtracts, it skips out the money in column, but you know it's money out because it says money out to start with. Uh, and then the balance has gone down 50 pounds and zero pennies on there. So it's, it's just a really nice feature. And then the navigation changes slightly um, and we're still working on the best way of doing this. So at the moment you can navigate cell by cell, left and right with the left and right arrows. The, outer arrows on the keypad um, go row by row so you can jump down directly a row underneath where you are um, and it will tell you where you are row as well so and then we can go backwards to the left on them November 4th. so it allows you to go up down left and right through the rows of the column uh, of the table knowing where you are with the headings being described as well. So we really hope that's gonna be a useful feature for blind users to, to give them some form of better access to, to tabular information. Um, and we're quite excited about it. So if you have any feedback on that as well for, for Jeff, then please do pass it on. And because and, we, we do listen to, to customers and, and when there's features like this, um, we, we obviously we try and get them in as quickly as we can. Sorry, Larry, for the RTF, but this, this I hope you, you might think this one might be fairly, fairly useful for you as well. Um, so it's kind of things like this sometimes jump the jump the queue a bit. Um, just trying to think if I've got something else. I didn't show it doing multiple languages as well. We're running out of time. I've got an old French textbook here, but the Evolve, the, sorry, the ReadEasy product was the first one to automatically detect languages actually on the, the ReadEasy Move generation two generations ago. Um, so it's got really powerful language detection. And I think it's one of the only ones that will actually, if you want it to, automatically detect um, the language on a sentence by sentence basis doesn't always work brilliantly but if you've got one sentence in French and then one sentence in English and one sentence in Spanish if you and you've got that mode turned on it will just automatically change the voices to those different languages as you read um, it gets a bit difficult if you've only got like two or three words because for it trying to match them up in the dictionary and, and be sure that it's that language that's where it starts getting a bit tricky um, but you have the standard mode as well where you just photograph it and it will change the language on a per page basis which is then almost well, it's like 99.99 percent accurate every time when you do that i think i've got this one set to french and english at the moment so just try if i just capture a french page quickly this is all in french my um textbook on here so i can just capture this really quickly hopefully it'll just start speaking to us in french Recognizing. In majuscule, la langue des publicitaires. Yep. Esprit so. la publicité. 
again so you don't have to do anything really fast really accurate just hit capture and it'll change the language for you the only languages it can't do automatically are the uh asian languages like chinese uh japanese it'll be arabic as well korean uh, russian as well i think they're ones that you have to manually select actually one of the other nice features really quickly on here i won't go into it but i'll just describe it we have what are called recognition profiles or recognition presets so it's more of a thing that your distributor might set up for you if you're not sort of an advanced user but you can go in and choose which languages are being are turned on for the three different recognition presets and to change the recognition preset you can do it in the menu but you can just press and hold play pause and go up and down recognition profile three activated recognition profile one activated recognition profile two activated i was on two before so i could have recognition profile one is english um, and when recognition profile two could be korean um, and recognition profile three could be english spanish french and german if i wanted it to be um, so and then once they're set up it's saved in the machine's memory and then you can just navigate between those recognition profiles with a shortcut there or by going into the menu um, really quickly so if i go into the menu um, the nice thing with the menu is the zoom control for the low vision users work in exactly the same way so if i adjust the zoom it'll actually make the menu bigger for you as well uh, and smaller so you can adjust that to the font size that you need um, just by using the standard zoom controls which is pretty unique i think on there as well um, and then you can navigate up and down the menu with the up and down buttons on here and then obviously it reads out the menu out loud to you all the time as well um, the manual is built onto the device as well so if you need to you don't you get a, a physical copy of, of the manual as well in live print but you can just open the manual up um, and we've got the latest version of it is on the built onto the device as well in english at least on there um I'm trying to think that's Kind of pretty much it. There are there are there are other things on there that it does. Jeff might try might remind me of a few others, but I think we're we're pretty much kind of out of time on there as well. But if there's any questions, uh, or anyone wants to see anything, then please let us know. All right. Well, let me uh, let me get back in here. Whoops. Just minor technical difficulties. <laughs> Okay, and have a video on too. So I'm back. So um, wanted to give you some presentation resources uh, and some contact information and things like that. Uh, you can get information at the web address listed um, for iReader and for Read Easy Evolve. We also have support resources where you're going to find uh, tutorials. Um, other helpful things, drivers, that sort of thing, both for Rehan and for Vision Aid International. And then I also listed our, our webinar schedule. And I can send this PowerPoint out to anybody that requests it. Um, and here is contact information below. You can reach our sales email at sales at iriat.com. Uh, it's iri-at.com. Um, I also put my personal um, Email on there is Jeff, J E F F dot Gardner, G A R D N E R at I R I E dash A T dot com, as well as our phone number 1 888 308 0059, and I'm at extension 103. Uh, we have a couple upcoming webinars on there as well. I uh, have one coming up on the 24th of this month. For Supernova, we're going to dive into some advanced features, and then on the 30th, we're going to go back and spend some more time with our our friend uh, Yacht Brighter in Holland and look uh, again at the MDA, the Motorized Drawing Arm for Tactile Graphics. And we'll be announcing some more webinars as we'll continue doing these every couple, three weeks on uh, different products that we that we have. And we may even come back and do, I think we'll probably do one, another, uh, like a deep dive on uh, Read Easy Evolve and we'll show that uh, touchscreen feature and some of those things. <laughs> but wanted to leave a little bit of time if there are, well, I guess we're already over time, but if you have any questions or anything else, I've tried to answer chats and questions and things along the way. And uh, now would be the time to write in or raise your hand or something along those lines. But it looks to me like we got all those things. Uh, looks like we got all the questions answered and we don't have any more. I'm just gonna say, Jeff, as well, the only thing I, I didn't show is that the, the camera on the unit also folds and stores in the back of it as well. So when you do wanna transport it, it's just one thing, the keypad and the, the uh, camera goes, stores in the back of the, the system. Yeah, there was a question about portability and things with, um, uh, with the, uh, 
you know, it doesn't have a battery. I did mention in the Q&A that Read Easy doesn't have a battery, but all you have to do is plug it in and it's good to go. It's very light. Um, like I show people, I lift it up with one finger. Um, and like Ella said, the camera will pop out. I don't know if you noticed, it will, it'll work. You can just, while it's on, pop it in and out of either slot and then it will fold in half and, and just fold down on the unit. So it's real portable, light little guy to take around. So we do have a hand that went up. Um, let me see. I will allow Susan to talk. Did you have a question? You need to unmute yourself, but you can talk now. Prices, please. Um, the prices, I, sorry, I also put those in the, the Q&A. The uh, iReader is $19.99. And the Read Easy Evolve is $24.95. We're having a special right now where we're including the feature pack with that price. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my controls just got wonky here. Okay, so with that, I don't see any additional questions or anything. So I want to thank everybody again for joining us and thanks to Alice for staying up tonight and joining us in the UK. It was great to see you and thanks for inviting me, Jeff. Look forward to some new things. Alice always has new things coming out. So I'm sure in just a few months we'll be focusing some more webinars on some new products that it'll have coming out and uh, show you some more new exciting things from Vision 8 International. So thanks again for joining us today. And if I can figure out how to end this, I will. Everybody have <laughs> Thanks a great everyone. Day. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.